The Rockies are back, everybody. Welcome back to MLB The Show 21. Thank you for staying patient. Just been getting settled into my new place. That's taken a lot of time, but now got my setup ready, getting to more Madden 22, and of course the Rockies are going nowhere. This has been such a fun series to work on to this point, and we still have a lot of work to do if we want this team to become a winning franchise. I want to take you into the stream I did over the weekend. It was a really fun stream. And we have a bases loaded situation here. It's Rymel Tapia in the 10th inning. A chance to walk it off against the Padres. And we have a battle here. Full count for Tapia. Facing Jonathan Holder. He grounds it to the right side. And the Padres get out of the 10th. The Rockies can't score a run. By the way, just 1-1 one one in extra innings in Coors. That's really strange. But with Rymel Tapia being the final out of the 10th, he is the extra inning runner in the 11th. Still tied. First pitch to Connor Joe. Lifted to right center field. That's out of reach, and Connor Joe walks off the Padres. 2-1 Colorado. Tapia comes around to score, and the Rockies pick up another win against San Diego. We've had some fun against this team recently. And the whole year has been fun for Connor Joe, being called up, becoming an everyday player, and delivering a lot of key hits for this team, and just becoming more of a player we can rely on. Connor Joe, 29 years old, perhaps still has a chance to become one of the main parts of this rebuild. So we pick up the win there against San Diego. We're trying to go into the trade deadline here with some momentum. Not to make us buyers or anything, but Colorado picks up a win the next day. 1-0 against San Diego. Hardly scoring here in Coors. Andrew Heaney, a complete game shutout, and we sweep the Padres. A four-game winning streak for this team, taking us into a matchup against the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team that was very similar to us a year ago, but they made the big move to get Carlos Correa, this year's been completely different, and they are in the mix now to be the NL West champions. I wanted to pitch a game here with Yanni Chirinos. I've loved his season he's put together. I think that he is a great Coors Field pitcher. He keeps the ball down, not a ton of home runs allowed. Good command. Starting out here against Josh Rojas, and we get a 13-pitch battle to start the game. Rojas draws the walk. Pretty frustrating start to begin, honestly. The one weakness, I guess you could say, of Chirinos is, at times, struggles to put batters away. He won't pick up a lot of strikeouts, but really good slider gets Carlos Correa. Trying to leave Rojas at second base. Cattell Marte, the 1-1 is driven to right center field, out of reach and down. Rojas scores, Arizona takes the lead in the first. And for Yanni Chirinos, I wanted him to be one of the focuses of this episode. Took him 32 pitches to get out of the first. Meanwhile, the Rockies are taking on Madison Bumgarner and his return to top form has probably helped this Arizona playoff run. Leading off here, Rymel Tapia, 3-2, and the cutter taken inside. Now, one thing I did prior to this episode is I saw some of your feedback, and I fixed the order a little bit, going with more of our higher on-base players, higher in the order. I know, great idea, right? Why wasn't I already doing that? Well, we've moved Baez down to fourth now. We're trying to get more base runners on for the players who do bring power to the table, and Baez has more than anybody on this team. Two and two, Bumgarner drops the curveball on the outside corner. Beautiful pitch, strike three looking. Connor Joe batting fifth, and this one's hammered to left center field. It's got Carey back at the wall, gone! Connor Joe, three run homer in the first. Following up that walk-off winner in that previous game against the Padres. First game with this new lineup, and we already get the three-run home run that we've been looking for. We need some more runs driven in on this team. So you're seeing Tapia bat leadoff still, Garrett Hampson second, Charlie Blackman third. At times, he'll be hitting second as well. 
and I think that's going to give us a better chance to have base runners on for the middle of this order. Top of the second. That's a frustrating pitch there. We had that 13 pitch at bat to Rojas. The second inning starts with a walk as well. And then getting jammed here, chasing ball four. Just falling in right field, Carson Kelly base hit. This was a really frustrating start, and thankfully Connor Joe's home run made it a bit easier to handle. Madison Bumgarner launches one to right. It is caught, but that allows Christian Walker to move up to third. And then Brett Lowry trying to go to the same exact spot, maybe a bit further. And the Diamondbacks add another run. Both pitchers having to throw a lot of pitches here to start the game. One down, bottom three. Turned on by Baez! If it's fair, it's gone! And it's way gone! 460 plus feet! 19th of the season, Javi Baez! I'm hoping to see him hit about 35 this year. Hasn't been a high average hitter, so I'm okay moving him down to 4th. As we head into the fourth, Yanni Chirinos picks up his second strikeout of the day. And then Carson Kelly lines one over to Baez. Was able to settle things down for a little bit here. I really didn't want to go to the bullpen early in this game. Wanted Chirinos to get through five or six. So let's take this now. Into the bottom of the fourth inning, Josh Fuentes facing Madison Bumgarner, who really can't throw that any more perfect and it is called ball four. RBI chance for Rymel Tapia with two down and jammed a bit on the inside fastball. And Bumgarner ends the fourth inning. Heading into the top of the fifth now. Yanni Chirinos pitch count getting up there. Just trying to get through five. And I felt like after how the game began, it was a nice recovery to make it through five. Allowing the two runs. Not too bad. Bottom five now. How good has Charlie Blackman been in recent episodes? It's unbelievable the turnaround his season has had, and now he's become a great everyday hitter for us. Kyle Freeland enters the game. He was on our team back in year one. That's why you remember him. Diving stop by Carlos Correa, taking away a potential hit from Connor Joe, ending the inning. We go to our bullpen as well, starting with Ryan Castellani. Carlos Correa making plays in the field and delivering with the bat as well. This gets past Charlie in right field. It is a leadoff double in the sixth. Later, after moving up to third base, Castellani picks up the strikeout against David Peralta, trying to leave Correa at third. Christian Walker, line to center, landing in front of Tapia, who has to block it. Otherwise, you're talking at least three bases there. 4-3 Colorado. Now a drive from Carson Kelly. Tapia can't get to this one either. It's over his head. And that will bring home the tying run. Castellani, another tough outing. It's been a rough season for him, especially lately. So we go bottom six, Alex Young in the game. Third lefty of the day for the Diamondbacks. Well, good news for us. Ryan McMahon hits lefties pretty well, and he's going to left center field. McMahon around first. There's a leadoff double now for Colorado. Bottom of the order, Elias Diaz. And he's a really solid contact hitter. 81 contact against lefties, not sending McMahon. Runners at the corners now and coming off the bench. We signed him to be a lefty masher. Here is Adam Duvall. Two on, one down, 2 0. Missing inside. 3 0 to Adam Duvall. Taking all the way as the cutter falls below the knees. And that is going to load the bases. Rymel Tapia, 0 for 2 on the day. And a huge chance to break the game open. Tapia grounds it up the middle. Knocked down by Correa, but not played cleanly. Not like the one hit by Joe earlier. So a run scores, everybody's safe. 5-4 Colorado. You have Charlie Blackman, 2 for 3. Really good swings to this point, too. First pitch. Driving into right center field. This one's deep. It touches down on the warning track. 
Charlie around second, clearing the bases, on his way to third, safe! Bases, clearing triple for Charlie Blackman! An electrifying moment here in Coors Field as the Rockies add four here in the sixth inning. But they're not finished. Javi Baez, 3-1, taking against Caleb Smith. Fourth lefty in a row for Arizona. And then it's Connor Joe out to left field. He's done it once again. Second three-run homer of the day, number nine on the season. This is much better for the offense. A ton of base runners in this game and opportunities for everybody to do some damage. All I wanted to do is optimize the lineup with who we have. Great showcase here against the Diamondbacks. Now McMahon drives one down the line off the foul pole. A solo home run. Number 10 on the season. That was one of my favorite home runs here, just to see that line shot off the pole. Charlie Blackman, by the way, trying to duplicate it, but this one misses by 8.7 feet. Charlie hit the ball hard every time he hit. I don't know, my swing with him is just dialed in perfectly right now, and everything's going to right center like it should. Here's a double play, 6-4-3 in the 8th. Colorado just cleaning this one up. Austin Gomber in the game. Josh Van Meter blown away. Two down and a grounder to the right side. Let Connor Joe in this one. He drove in six. That's enough to win the game on its own. Rockies win 12-4. Very fun game. Eight runs, sixth inning. 15 hits that's a complete team win right there just wish that Chirinos had gotten the victory and if you would like to see that game live it is the last stream I did on the channel it was a very fun stream I mean look at the games I got here sometimes I sit down knowing I don't have a lot of time and just get perfect content honestly so Colorado picks up that victory and the next thing I wanted to focus on was David Geronimo, our first round pick in the year one draft. And he has been tearing it up at double A all season, hitting in the 300s, hitting for power. He's a two war player. It's time to get him some at bats now at triple A. And there are a lot of players here who might be deserving of an opportunity and Tuki Toussaint's played really well. But I want to focus on David Geronimo, his 18-game hitting streak, and where his future is going. This game here was just meant to be his final game at AA. Hopefully, it's just his final game here, period. Want to get him to AAA? There's a perfect swing right at the center fielder, but great contact nonetheless. The plan is to play him at AAA the rest of the season. Are his ratings MLB ready? Of course they are, but I still am focused on his long-term development. The goal is not to have 75 overall David Geronimo, it's to have like 88 overall David Geronimo and getting him there as fast as I can. So I want him playing at a high level and then eventually we're going to move him up to AAA here in this episode. And before he leaves the yard goats, he'll leave the yard and extend that 18 game hitting streak to 19, 394 feet. That's a nice way to say goodbye to Hartford. And he'll be moving now to AAA Albuquerque. If he plays well there, and I expect that he will, and we'll get some player lock games with him in various episodes, I imagine. Maybe a triple-A playoff run as well. We have pretty good triple-A and double-A teams this season. But if he plays well, then he'll be added to the 40-man roster next year, which will get him an invite to spring training where he will have a chance to compete to make the team. I think we could see him play at the big league level as early as next year. He'll have to find a spot to play in the outfield. Rymel Tapia is obviously starting. Garrett Hampson has been, 
and then you have Charlie Blackman who's like the oldest player on the team and so it's a bit difficult to know how he's going to be playing I mean this year to start he looked finished it looked like his career was basically done and then he does well coming off the bench he's back to playing every day and he's hitting like 270 so you're just not going to put him on the bench when he's playing that well We'll see how things look a year from now, but if I had to decide on if I want Geronimo on the bench at the big league level or playing every day at AAA, I'm probably going to have him play every day at AAA if his overall is still in like the mid to high 70s. He's gotten good development this year. I want that development to continue and only playing every now and then on the bench, one at bat a day, basically. He'll play a lot if he was in that situation just cause it's the National League and pinch hitting is so common. But I wanna do what's best for his development above all else here. So he's up at AAA now. We made the move. Somehow not a top 50 prospect. I'm not sure how that works. I did let trades happen, by the way, this year. And only one trade actually went through at the deadline. I made the trade slider like a three or something. Like I wanted it to be possible, but I didn't want it to get out of control like in year one. So I'll have to figure that out. But the trade logic in this game has not been great. Well, why don't we get now into the AAA debut. It's David Geronimo. His first at bat, unfortunately, is a strikeout. Number two here in the third inning. Getting ahead against Sean Dubin. 3-0. And green light with two down and a runner in scoring position. He lines out to second base, but good contact. We're used to that. Then in the fifth Jammed here a bit behind that one a frustrating pop-up again with runners on base They were giving him some opportunities bases loaded in the seventh 2-1 Can't connect here against the changeup Count runs the two and two and he takes low Good fastball now a full count Fouling off keeping the at-bat going another payoff pitch and a take below the knees. That is a walk and a run driven in, tying the game at two. Colton Welker up after him, and he can't build upon his two for three start as he strikes out. We take this into the ninth. Two more on for Albuquerque. David Geronimo looking for that first hit, trying to continue that double A hitting streak. It'd be at 19 games here. 0 1. Tapped it basically a swinging bunt. He will not reach He does advance the base runners and then Albuquerque loaded the bases for Jamison Hanna first pitch and it's grounded to the right side They cannot get at least one and Albuquerque drops this game in Geronimo's triple-a debut a lot of runners left on base, unfortunately not how I wanted his debut to go. I expect these AAA games to be a bit more difficult. And we'll revisit David Geronimo over these next couple months in game. We are now 101 games into the season with Colorado. They're 46 and 55, 7 and 3 in their last 10. We're not really in the wild card hunt, but we're not mathematically out either. So, it's a much better season than year one. I'm planning on getting these episodes out much more frequently so we can get to the end of year two and see what steps we can make going into the future. I think I have a pretty good feel for where this team is at and what we're going to need going into the future. But it's been really awesome to see players like Connor Joe take a step forward. Andrew Heaney has really helped out the pitching rotation. Same with Yanni Chirinos. You have those two, Herman Marquez. Three pitchers I plan on building around for a while going forward. And I believe in our minor league system, with those teams playing well, we're going to see some more players who should make for a really competitive spring next season. So with the season now winding down as we get into the month of August in year two, let me know what you'd like to see down below and I'll do my best to show off various players, whether they're at the big league level or down in the minor leagues still. Want to give you a fun end of the season, so let me know what you'd like to see and I will look to get 
a lot more episodes up here, even with Madden 22 being out. Thank you all for watching today's video. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There's more Rockies coming your way soon. Have a great day.